North Dakota Attorney General Wayne Stengem announced his gubernatorial campaign today, and he joins us via the phone. Mr. Stengem, thanks so much for joining us, sir. I uh, want to jump right in here. You know, you've been obviously in public service now for about 39 years. You've seen ups and downs in North Dakota. Um, what do you see as the biggest challenge right now that our state faces? And if you are to be elected governor, what are you going to do about it? I, I think that the, most of the, uh, the challenges that we see are really opportunities descri uh, disguised as challenges because we've been doing incredibly well here in North Dakota, especially over the last 10 years. We have a lot to build on. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not concerned at this point with the reduction in the price of oil, the decline in the price of farm commodities. They're a real concern, and we have to manage that budgetary constraint going forward. We expect that the, that the, uh, that the price of oil and, and farm commodities, too, will increase in the next year to year and a half. We certainly hope they will. But if they don't, well, then we have to make the tough calls that we always do. I served for 39, uh, 24 years in the legislature in times when revenues were flush and when they were lean. And, of course, the Constitution requires that we balance our budget so we can't do like Washington, D.C. does and spend beyond our, mean, beyond our means. We have to spend the money that we expect to bring in. But that being said, I think the lesson that we learn here in North Dakota is, A, to be optimistic about the future, but also take the lesson from history that what we need to continue to do in North Dakota is diversify our economy, not rely just on one leg of our economy, but many. And we're doing that in many very, very good ways. Up in Grand Forks, the unmanned aerial vehicle program is something that is a, uh, a, a national, nationally recognized. We're the hub up there of what's happening. Fargo, too, is doing the same thing with, uh, with high-tech industry, with Microsoft and lots of other operations down in Fargo. We need to encourage that further kind of development, and that's what I want to do going forward into the future. Uh, Mr. Stenson, one of the big conversations, obviously, here in the Valley has been the situation surrounding Andrew Sadek and that investigation. Um, just before the last election, October 10th of 2014, you said, hey, you're going to call for a review of SEMCA. Um, one, have you done that? And two, what have you learned about uh, that situation and this investigation? Well, two things that I said that I was going to do. One was to have a review that was conducted by, uh, uh, headed up by uh, uh, an agent from South Dakota who came up. We do that uh, from time to time. And they did that. The other thing, and I think the most significant thing, is, is this. Uh, the Southeast, the SEMCA, was one of two uh, uh, narcotics task forces in North Dakota that were not overseen by the Bureau of Criminal Investigation. The BCI, of course, is an assisting agency, but we do head up in all the other areas of the state, the uh, narcotics task forces. I promised what I would do would be to go to the legislature to get funding for an additional BCI agent whose job it would be to go down to SEMCA and head that operation up, and that's exactly what I did. And so we have an agent down there. It is now headed up by a BCI agent, and I think that's making a major uh, a major improvement with with the issues down there. And it may we weren't, of course, involved with uh, with the Andrusatic matter at all because we were we were not uh, we did not uh, uh, head up the narcotics task force there. But as the top cop in the state, it still has got to at least somewhat be underneath your purview, correct? It, well, it isn't, and because it's important to recognize. And I was in the legislature when we established the uh, drug task forces in North Dakota was then the drug enforcement unit and there was a lot of concern to make sure that we were not talking about having a state police agency here that the BCI is there only for the purpose of assisting local law enforcement local sheriffs and local uh, police departments and so that's what we do and so it's important to recognize that that's the duty of the BCI so as the top common in the state, you've got no I, jurisdiction over these I can't, people? No, I, do, I, I do not have anything to do with local law enforcement. The local sheriffs are elected by the individuals in the counties. I can't hire them or fire them. Same thing, the chiefs of police, of course, are hired by the local uh, city government. So let me ask That's you this, because is. many people are saying, hey, there's still a lot of unanswered questions. I know you can't necessarily comment on this because it's still an open investigation, but that's the problem. It's been an open investigation now for quite some time. Two things. What does it take to get this investigation closed? Well, Go ahead, sir. That, that, well, the investigation of the death is, of course, being conducted by Minnesota, not by our office, because that's where he was found. 
And so that's not something over which I have any control. Wow. Okay. Um, and, just, and so your question needs to be to the Minnesota BCA. Yeah, and I, obviously we'll follow up with them, but it just seems, again, we continue to get the runaround. I think people, yeah. especially uh, the family and the people down in that community, want some answers. I'm curious if you've reached out to Tammy Sadek recently, and if so, how the conversation has gone. No, you know, I haven't talked to her recently. I know that I asked the director of the BCI some time ago, a year or so ago, to go over and have a talk with her just to make sure that she understood what it is that we do, what we can do, and what we can't do. All right, last question for you, sir. Uh, you told the High Plains Reader, obviously, Mrs. Sadek is looking to create a new law that would um, really limit how you can use college age informants. You told the High Plains Reader that you would oppose such a law that bans police from using students as informants. Why specifically? Well, I would oppose legislation that singles out any particular group of people by category who are not eligible if they want to to participate as a confidential informant well, because the question is well why college students how about high school dropouts how about drug addicts who have difficulty making intelligent decisions perhaps and so i think what makes much more sense is that you make sure if there's any legislation that's necessary that people are making the decision that they have a right to make that they may want to be a confidential informant do so knowingly and intelligently knowing what it is they're getting into. Mr. Sensum, quickly, I got 30 seconds. This will be my last question. Um, you may be the CEO of the state. Uh, you know, a little over a year from now, you've seen Governor Jack Dowell come out and say, hey, I want to stop all Syrian refugee resettlement until there's a betting, better vetting process. Uh, quickly, yes or no, do you agree with him? I do agree with him. You know, we're a very welcoming people here in North Dakota. We all came from somewhere else, but that doesn't eliminate the requirement and the obligation to make sure that people who are coming here are not going to be dangerous to the citizens of North Dakota. Attorney General Wayne Stengem, thank you for your time, sir. Enjoy the campaign. Trail. I look forward to having you back on, okay? Okay, okay very good. All right, I'd love to know your thoughts, obviously, what our Attorney General had to say there. It's very easy to join our conversation. Go to our Facebook page. You can text us, email us. We'll be right back with your feedback.